A big thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this film. One of the greenest countries on earth, over 25% of which is made up of protected national parks. Containing 5% of the world's total biodiversity, Costa Rica is a place close to nature. We escaped the European winter to spend one month exploring this incredible nation, living out of backpacks and vans. This is the first of a tropical series around Costa Rica, a country like no other. In this series, we find ourselves camping on beaches, face to face with wildlife and wading through jungles. We're excited to welcome you back on our journey. If you're new, make sure you subscribe to follow along on our travels. We are traveling with Eric and Lisa. They are Dutch van life friends who we met back in 2020 while traveling Italy in our vans. We've been plotting to do a trip together ever since. And now, here we all are in... Costa Rica! The first thing we did was hire a car from San Jose. You can take the van lifers out of their vans, but we will still make sandwiches and eat them in the car park of a supermarket. Wherever we are. <laughs> we then made a beeline for the jungle. We have arrived in Costa Rica. Yeah. And it is so good. We're starting off just by chilling out in the rainforest for a little bit. We're in this beautiful little cabin in the middle of the forest. Jungle, I should say. It's jungle over here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it's so nice. And the weather, you can just feel the heat in your bones. It feels so good. And you can just hear the, the nature and the wildlife all around us. And the air is just so good clear and just lovely. Yeah, it really feels like we've arrived to Costa Rica. And we're in flip-flops. You can probably hear me just going flip-flop, <laughs> flip-flop. We're starting off by backpacking. Yeah, and then we're going to rent an amazing 4x4 four four camper so that we can just spend our time wild camping in these amazing places here. So we just actually, we just yeah. can't believe it. We're I really can't believe that we're going to do van life in Costa Rica. It's just going to be so different to any other van life that we've experienced. And in a 4x4 four four as well, we're so excited. Of course we miss jits. Obviously we of miss course. jits. But you can't get away from the fact that it's exciting to be in a 4x4 in Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, and I also love backpacking. I think that's obviously going to be really fun as well. Yeah. And also doing it with friends. Oh, it's going to be so great. So yeah, we're effectively spending half the time backpacking, half the time in a camper van. So we'll be able to really understand what's the best way of traveling. Is it best to be in a camper van in Costa Rica or is it best to be backpacking around Costa Rica? And I think they both are going to have their pros and cons. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. So far, this place is stunning. We spent three days in this cabin in the jungle. It was a world away from the winter we left behind in Europe. The place was full of life. One of the owners, Jay, showed us around and introduced us to the local wildlife. We planted a pineapple plant, a tree, and ate great food prepared by Jay and Nohe. So guys, we are about to go on a night walk into the jungle in search of frogs and any other wildlife that we might find in the jungle Hopefully at night. Hopefully not snakes. Hopefully not snakes. There are snakes here, so we have to be careful. And spiders, dangerous ones. Um, but we've got a guide, so we're safe. Ooh, Jay, will keep, Jay will keep us safe. <laughs> at night, different animals are out and about exploring the woods. Our highlight was definitely the frogs. The following day, we noticed we had a very flat tire. We think it must have been something to do with the very steep, stony road we struggled with, which leads to the lodge. So guys, we're about to get lived out of here in this 4x4, which is good news because of our flat tire. Um, we're reluctant to drive that road, so we're gonna drive as few times as possible. Um, so very kindly, Jay is giving us a lift and we are gonna spend some time with him at some beautiful blue pool underneath some basalt columns. So we are very excited about that. Um, yeah, there's our car. 
sad looking car um, and this which is a lot more equipped for these type of roads so you don't strictly speaking you don't need a 4x4 to be traveling around Costa Rica but I think to get to the less touristy places like this and the more remote places it's highly advisable to get <laughs> a 4x4 which we will have soon. Jay took us to a secret spot out in the wilderness. So we really are off the beaten track here, guys. And the is not here. Is this like so old or is this already a couple of days here or just Maybe yet? because this one doesn't... About <laughs> five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> this exactly. looks so fresh. Yeah, it's like five minutes ago. It's somewhere here. We've seen snakes, we've seen spiders, we've seen poisonous little frogs. We've battled through jungle. We're here. We've and it's beautiful. Lives. Funny thing, we're not there yet. Oh. We're not there yet, but we're nearly there. One last thing to do before we get there, we've got to wade through this river. So. Okay, guys, now I think we are here. Look at this. So good. This little spot was an absolute hidden treasure, an idyllic river lined by walls of basalt columns. Frequented only by locals, it was away from the crowds and perfect for swimming. I even managed to pack my favorite floaty, Señor Flamingo. I do kind of wonder a little bit what's living in there because it's quite, I don't know, quite tropical. On our way back, we crossed an ant road before enjoying a watermelon snack. Today is our last day here in Secropia Eco Lodge and I can tell you now that I absolutely do not want to leave because it is the most beautiful place that I think I've ever stayed to be honest. It's just full of nature and wildlife and Jay and Noe have really really made us feel right at home and yeah it's just so nice waking up early and hearing the nature. <laughs> After a steady start to the trip, we got back on the road. With our trusty little car, we headed west. Met by some questionable roads, journeys often took a little longer than anticipated, but we always got there in the end. Always when there's something that needs to be done, you get this camera. <laughs> it was our first taste of backpacking life since we started full-time travel, and it was an interesting comparison to van life. In some ways, it was less flexible. We had to have accommodation booked along with a car separately. It isn't as easy to stay somewhere longer because we'd fallen in love with it or to spontaneously move somewhere else. But backpacking does come with its advantages. We had a base to cook and we had running water and toilets. While in some ways backpacking was restricting, everything we needed was on our backs and that was freeing. We explored the surf towns of Montezuma and Santa Teresa. Beach, 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 beach. Soaking in the sun and the atmosphere and failing to surf. I'm an absolute beginner, I know nothing.
So guys, this is an interesting little pit stop. We are on a place called Crocodile Bridge, and it's just a main road. And under the bridge, there is supposed to be lots of crocodiles that just hang out. So we're gonna see if we can spot some crocodiles. <laughs> We'd never seen crocodiles before, and to just see them in the wild, hanging around like it's normal, was amazing. They like to relax in the water or on the riverbanks with their jaws open to cool down. After a good stint of backpacking, it's safe to say we were excited to get back into van life. We hired this 4x4 bongo with a rooftop tent, loaded up the icebox and headed straight to the beach. This is so exciting. We are just arriving to our very first park up in this amazing van. Nothing beats the feeling of pulling up to a new wild camping spot, especially one like this. So guys, we have arrived at our first wild camping spot and it is absolutely stunning. We are here underneath the palm trees, by the beach, blue skies. It's this is like, you couldn't even write this. This is perfect. This is perfect. It's exactly what we wanted when we were thinking wild camping spots in Costa Rica. And also just thinking about this terrain, Jits would have definitely not made it. Jits wouldn't so. have made it here. So yeah, we definitely need one of these bad boys. So yeah, now we've just got to set it up. We've got to do the pop top tent. We've got to put the awning out, set the kitchen up outside. So yeah, we need to go get to work. But first, we want to thank our video sponsor. We want to say a big massive thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a really convenient nutritional drink that's made up of a blend of ingredients to supplement your nutritional needs. And we love drinking it because it helps us with our energy, our focus, our gut health and our recovery. So much more. It's actually made me a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> well, has it made me a morning person? I'm getting morning. up at seven now. That's a morning person. It makes him enjoy his mornings. All you need is one scoop or sachet and eight ounces of water. It has 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and all the good stuff, all in one convenient daily serving. So we know we're getting our vitamins and minerals even when we're out in the jungle. AG1 is perfect for us because when we're traveling this part of the world, we don't know exactly what we're going to eat and what our options will be. Don't get us wrong, we absolutely love rice and beans, but it doesn't exactly give us everything our body needs. Having AG1 gives us peace of mind to know that we're getting loads of vitamins, loads of minerals, first thing in the morning, so that we can make the most of traveling and making all these films. Yay! Since taking AG1, we've definitely noticed our energy levels go up. And despite what Tanya says, it has made me more of a morning person. Surprisingly, my favorite thing about Athletic Greens is the taste, because it doesn't actually taste stereotypically green. In fact, it's actually quite sweet. So guys, if you're interested or curious about AG1 at all, click the link in our video description and then you will get one year's worth of free vitamin D. And five travel packs for free! Woo! <laughs> That evening, we settled into our new temporary home under the palm trees. So guys, we are going to sleep here in the rooftop tent. Tanya's already asleep actually. Um, and it is pitch black i'm literally i'm just shining the torch from my phone to light everything um but it's pitch black out there uh we can hear crickets and all sorts of strange animals as well that we don't know <laughs> funny birds and stuff um the stars are amazing um and we can just hear the waves and it's beautiful um it's something really funny about being up on a tent uh, in a tent up on top of the van um, we feel really high up, so you feel really safe. You don't, not worried about all the snakes and the spiders that are inevitably out there. 
Um, and yeah, it's just really cool, but it is very hot. We just had to open the side vents of this tent as well to try and get a free breeze um, because it is really, really warm in here at the moment. Um, but we're hoping it will cool down overnight as it gets later. But yeah, this is it. This is camping in the tent. Here's Tanya. Absolutely out cold. Good morning. It is our first morning waking up on a rooftop tent. And it is so nice because we can hear the sea next to us and we've got a sunrise. <laughs> nice and early this morning because we are visiting a national park called Manuel Antonio which is 45 minutes away from here so everyone's really busy this morning. Getting back to van life meant getting back to slow mornings and having to give time to the van before anything else could be done. Good teamwork. Adjoined to the bustling town of Manuel Antonio, the national park is where the jungle meets the sea. At just seven and a half square miles, it is the smallest national park in Costa Rica. But what it lacks in size, it makes up for in beauty. It is one of the most popular parks in Costa Rica, and it's easy to see why. We're gonna try to save our money, and we didn't hire a guide for this, but you're allowed to just come in as long as you've got tickets. And walk around on your own. Exactly, so we've decided that we were just gonna listen out for the nature sounds, and hopefully we get to see some sloths and some monkeys and some other things. Some other things, but <laughs> you would definitely see a lot more if you got a guide, because we're walking around and they've all got their little telescopes out and they're saying, look at this, look at this, look at this. So there's a lot of things to see. Uh, if you've got a guide, I think. So yeah. maybe it's advisable to take a guide. Yeah, definitely. I think it's just because we're doing so many, we're trying to see as many national parks as we can. We can't. We, we can't, can't pay for a guide out every yes. time. <laughs> exactly. So now we're, we're, we're tuned into the nature. <laughs> just. Just about. It turns out we didn't need a guide to enjoy the park. We saw plenty of the larger animals. It's actually been quite a success without a tour guide. Whilst we haven't been able to see lots of the smaller animals that they're spotting, like the frogs, some of the birds, and I assume butterflies and things, we have spotted like monkeys, a couple of different monkeys, um, a giant mouse thing, which we don't know what it is. Again, if you had a tour guide, they'd be able to tell us what it is. Um, and a foxy-like thing that looked like a dog, walked like a dog. It's so nice. So yeah, it's been amazing. And, and we're... also the fact that we can hear the the waves crashing as well, and we're in a forest. Yeah, that's just... it. We can hear the waves crashing from the jungle. So we're gonna go check out the sea now. Within the park grounds, there are four stunning beaches, often noticeably quieter than the others in the vicinity. That evening, we made our way to a new park up by the beach, getting our water topped up along the way. We arrived just as the sun was going down, and after spending all day searching for a sloth in the national park, we now had one as a neighbor. We've just pulled up in this park up. There is a sloth in the palm tree, and there is amazing beach vibes going on over here, and the sunset just went down over there as we were pulling in, um, and it's just, an epic spot, it's just such nice energy. Um, I just can't believe that we've been searching all day for a sloth in the national park and now there's just one there sleeping in a palm tree right next to the van, and <laughs> it's so funny. And I love as well, there's so many surfers out as well. Yeah. This is so cool. It's a great spot, yeah. great spot.
This really was a van life dream. Parking up on a beautiful sandy beach and calling it home. A warm beach at sunset has a unique atmosphere. The day is winding down and the heat is subsiding. Some people are surfing, others are sitting on the sand, but everyone is acutely aware that they are in a beautiful place on a beautiful evening. better way to watch a sunset than grabbing our camping chairs. Eric and Lisa are just coming down from the van. Our home is literally right there, that's our bedroom. Normally the worst thing about watching the sunset on the beach is all the sand, but we've got our chairs with us because we live just there, so. Yeah. And we can just rinse off our feet, like in our outdoor showers, it's perfect. <laughs> Happy days. Yeah, look at this view. That is it for our first film here in Costa Rica. It has been absolutely incredible. Make sure you stick around because we've got lots more of Costa Rica to see. We've got big plans and hopefully even gonna see some whales. <laughs> um, so don't forget, if you like the video, give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, and yeah, thank, thank you very you so much, much for watching. Bye guys. Subscribe to continue this series. Still to come, we go whale watching, visit a very special animal sanctuary, we find one of our favourite ever wild camping spots, and much, much more.